Hello, hello, and welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. I am Melissa Kerman, um, and I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over 20 years and still love it as much as I did from the very beginning, maybe even more, and I'm so happy to be here. Um, happy New Year! I took a couple of weeks off um, uh, at the end of 2023, and I feel refreshed and ready to go and share some fun paper crafting projects with you. So um, let's see. I see people joining in. Hi, Lorley. Say hello when you when you've joined in. Introduce yourselves. Tell me where you're from. Um, uh, I'm glad you can hear me now. <laughs> Didn't realize I was muted. Um, but glad I checked. Anyway, so um, I have a fun project for you today using brand new products. Um, so one item from the new mini catalog, the January to April mini catalog that went live today. And another uh, item, which is a free celebration item. I think it's my favorite, one of my favorites anyway, of the celebration items. Uh, and it's a sentiment set, which is so versatile and I love it. Um, we're going to be playing with some ink and a background stamp. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to do, um, to use this background stamp and to apply the ink and all that good stuff. So uh let's just show you i do a couple little announcements in addition to um my presentation my demonstration today i've got a couple of announcements um, i'm going to show you some fun tips and tricks for using your punches in creative ways and then i also have a new class um, called the faux parchment paper technique class now this is also my club class um and um, so I'm going to I'm going to show you sneak peeks of those projects. I'm super excited about them. It's a fun and interesting technique that uh, has sort of a vintage look and feel to it. So um, let's just do a couple of the quick announcements. I know I've mentioned some of them. Let's see. Hi, Megan. <laughs> Good to see you here. Thanks for saying hello. Um, you're covered in snow. Let's see. Um, oh, I guess <laughs> Lorley's asking if you're covered in snow. That would make sense, right? This time of year. All right. So before I say anything more, please uh, share, share this uh, video, tag your friends, uh, follow me here on Facebook or on YouTube. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, like, subscribe, all those good things. Uh, I have to write that there on the top of my notes so that I remember to say it because otherwise I'll forget. Um, as I mentioned, the new mini catalog went live today. The celebration promotion started today. It's the biggest promotion of the Stampin' Up! year. Um, you can get freebies when you purchase products, when you host a party, and when you join Stampin' Up! And there's an amazing, amazing starter kit special happening right now as you can see there it's the the usual option which is um you get 125 dollars in product for 99 dollars but then there's two um additional options for free gifts one is uh something that's a 60 dollar value it's a it's, um, glass matte um set of products and there are details on my website and it's a 60 dollar value so it's an amazing option and the op second option is um, you get to pick 30 additional dollars of free product to go in your um, starter kit. So it's a great um, offer. It goes through the end of February. So February 29th is um, when it ends. All right. Um, now I am also, I also offer a, a stamp club. Hi, Tulane. Welcome. Thanks for commenting and saying hello. Um, and uh, this is the beginning of the year. So I am doing a special for anybody who joins my stamp club, which you can do either in person or you can do it online. Um, and if you join by January 15th, if you're a new stamp club member, I'm going to give you a free new embellishment from the new mini catalog. So uh, it's a nice little added perk um, for joining my club. And if you join the club, you basically get free class um, six times a year. So it's every other month. So my online club would be in February coming up. Um, but you can just sign up by January 15th. Um, I do the same projects for my in-person club, which happens later in January, as for the online club. So I cut everything all at the same time. So that's why the January 15th deadline. Um, so let's see what else. Okay. You can also RSVP for um, the a la carte class, which is the same club class, but it, the class is the faux parchment paper technique class. Um, my team members get the electronic materials for that class for free. So if you're a team member, if you want a kit in the mail, 
sign up and register and pay and all that good stuff. But if you don't need the kit, um, you get those electronic materials for free. Another great perk of um, joining Stampin' Up! and buying the starter kit. All right, uh, that is all I got on the announcements for now. Let's go ahead and jump into the project. So um, this is the project that we're going to be making. I'm going to do a slight variation on it. We'll play around with a couple things just for fun. Um, and I'm using this new Botanical Beauty stamp sets, background stamp set or stamp. So it's one big honkin' stamp but it's really pretty. I love it. And then this is the celebration item that I said was uh, among my top favorites. I love some of the papers as well, but this is, I think one of my, it's my favorite stamp set, I think. Um, just really wonderful, versatile um, sentiments. So for our card tonight, we're going to actually use a different one from the one I have on this card here. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Tricia. Yay. So glad you're here. Thanks for saying hello. Okay, we'll set that aside. So <clears throat> now you have a couple of choices for how we ink this up. Um, and the way that I did this, uh, uh, my initial design was I basically did my inks direct to the stamp. So I can use my full size ink pads, but they're really big, right? So it's gonna cover a large surface area. You can do it at an angle, right? So that you're only touching part of it in certain parts. But if you have um, the Stampin' Spots, if you have any Stampin' Spots like these, they're really handy for getting um, into a more a small space, right? And I always like to start with my lightest color first um, so I don't risk contaminating um, my inks because uh, a light color against a dark color um, is not going to necessarily contaminate the ink as much as the other way. So I wouldn't want to use my green first and then potentially do yellow over it and get um, the green ink on the yellow pad. So anyway, if you have the Stampin' Spots, that's another, that's an option. Now you can also use the brand new Stampin' Up! Brayer to add your colors. You would ink this up and then you would add different colors. But I only have one brayer, so I don't want to use that tonight just because then I'll have to wash it in between. So that would be a little bit more complicated than I want to do tonight. Now the other option is to use sponge daubers. So, um... I think I'm going to go ahead and do maybe a combination of the above just for fun. Um, and this is going to show us, of course, the detail. So I'm going to kind of color bits and parts um, uh, so that I, right, what I did was I did Parakeet Party and the Daffodil Delight and then Melon Mambo. This was the color combination or is the color combination for the... Um, January 2024 Color Fusers blog hop. If you haven't checked out the blog hop, definitely do it. We have got some very talented artists um, who do their show their projects there. And there were um, 11 or 12 of, of us this month. We had somebody, I think, who was sick. But um, anyway, this is my project. This is the color scheme. So that's what I'm working with. I have a blog post up, but I will also have a PDF tutorial available to news subscribers in next Wednesday's newsletter. So we have the video here today, but then you'll also have some written instructions if you want it, if you're a newsletter subscriber. Yes, Happy New Year. Hi, Mary Beth. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Sharon. Oh, lots of people joining in. Wonderful. Hi, Donna. Uh, yay. So glad to see you guys all here. Um, yes, and Happy New Year. Uh, anyway, yes. So as far as the Brayer is concerned, stay tuned for more uh, about the Brayer and projects with the Brayer. Um, but uh, for today, I'm just showing it to you on camera. All right. So let's go ahead and start inking this up. And I think I'm going to focus my colors based upon the image this time. So instead of doing bands of color, the yellow and the green and the pink, I'm going to use my sponge jobbers to add color to selective spots. Um, so let's, uh, we can start with the yellow. Like I said, best to start with your lightest color first. This is a brand new sponge dauber. It's basically just a little sponge on the top of my little fingertip, <laughs> which is pretty handy there. And let's just see what I want to color in yellow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this on. And so there's, we've got foliage and we've got flowers. And 
the natural thing would be to have two colors, but I need to have three colors. So let's see how I want to do this. I think I'm going to do, let's see. I think I'm going to do some of the foliage in yellow and then some of it in green. So we'll start with that and just see how it goes. Making, making a racket over here. <laughs> it's my computer stand. And I go into the center too because I've got all these little dots. I can always go over it with another color. <clears throat> but I want to get a fair amount of yellow on there because the yellow, if anything's going to get overshadowed, it'll be the yellow since it's the lightest color. And it is a little bit hard to tell where I've got it. So I might end up having some overlap, but that'll just end up uh, being some interesting combinations of colors and mixing of colors. So we're just going to go with this and see what happens. All right, so done with the yellow. Now, because I'm using the daubers, I don't have to worry so much about contaminating my ink pads. Um, so that's a good thing. Okay, now I've got my parakeet party. And I'm going to do the rest of the foliage. My in the parakeet party. And of course I can do two colors on each of the foliage too if I want to mix it up. So I'm just pressing it on there, pressing it good and hard so that it makes sure I'm covering the whole thing. some point it's going to be hard to tell what's got ink and what doesn't. <laughs> okay, so we're going to stop that with the green. Now, I actually, let's see, I'm going to grab my granny apple green also, which is a little bit of a darker green, and just do like some of the tips of the leaves just to add a little bit of variation because I think it'll be a little bit more interesting and fun. And I think I'm adding some green to some of the yellow ones too. So it's going to be um, a little bit of a guess as to how it, how it all, what's where, but that'll just make it that much more fun. A surprise, right? <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Cindy. I appreciate it. All right. Um, so now I'm just going to, Kind of take a look at this you can probably see on camera most of the images have ink on them now and i can see that i've gotten some ink on the flowers just inadvertently so that's going to be interesting hopefully it's the yellow and not the green <laughs> but we'll see what would so green and pink is going to turn into brown probably so hopefully that's not going to happen okay so here's what we're going to do if I had a Q-tip here, I'd probably grab a Q-tip, but I'm just going to, um, just to be safe, like if it's yellow, it'll look really pretty, but if it's, if it's the green, that's going to look really funky. So I am just going to remove some of it and hedge my bits. I can always add a little yellow back in. Okay, we're going to do the flowers in the pink. It's like we're coloring in on the stamp itself. This is my kind of coloring in. <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little impatient with coloring in because it takes time. All right, I think we got it all covered. Just a little leaf there that looks uncovered. Just looking for the reflection of the ink there. Okay, crossing my fingers that there's, uh, it's all covered. I'm gonna move my card out of the way so I don't end up getting that 
wet and I'm just going to pull in this plastic piece so that I can spray on camera. You can see it. Now I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper and uh, I did it on white, but I want to be able to spray my stamp to help the inks move around a little bit and um, watercolor paper will take the water that much better than regular cardstock. I have a piece that I do on regular cardstock. I'm, I'll show you that so you can see the difference. So let's start with just spraying this. And I'm, I'm kind of far away, so I'm spraying, but I'm a good 12 feet, not 12 feet, 12 inches away. I want it to be wet, but not too wet. So I'm reactivating the ink that's on the stamp there. Okay, I think that's enough. And now we get to be surprised and see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to put down a paper towel, actually, underneath it. All right. Now, one of the gifts of the, the glass mat, there's a glass mat that's one of the gifts for a starter kit. Now, if I had that, I would be using that instead of my plastic piece here, which would be much prettier, actually. I'm hearing really nice things about that glass mat. Has anybody gotten the glass mat? <laughs> <coughs> All right, so you guys ready? Ooh, oh, I like it. And there's what we have. Very different from the first one, of course, because I had the band of pink along the bottom and then the yellow and the green. So this is kind of mixed up. It's a little bit more effort because I'm using the sponge daubers um, and coloring onto the stamp. Now, I have some residual ink here. So, um, and I, I want to actually see if I can stamp it on my inside piece to get a little bit of a um, decorative element on the inside. So I'm going to bring my paper towel back and let's see. I think I'm going to do this here because it looks like it'll probably have a little bit of all the colors and I kind of like that idea. So we're going to get to see how, of course, this shows up on regular white cardstock. Again, that's a little bit dirty it there at the top. Okay, so now you can see how that looks. And it's just the residual ink. So not a whole lot there. Hmm. So there's a little bit of, of uh, messy uh, up there. There's something on the paper that I didn't realize. I'll probably just cut that off. That's what I'll do. I'll cut it off. So I've got a, you know, a little bit of a decorative element on the bottom. There was not as much ink and the paper doesn't take the ink as well. So it's a little bit more modeled as compared to the watercolor paper, but it's still a nice little decorative element for the inside. So I'm pretty happy with that. All right. Let's close up my ink pads. I like that the colors mixed a little bit. I've got some foliage that has some green and yellow. So that has a little green and yellow. That has a little green and yellow. Same there. It's kind of pretty. I like it. I love this stamp, actually. It's, it's one of my favorite things in the mini, actually. All right. So let's go ahead and just um, set this aside for a minute to dry. And let's do the sentiment. So... I'm going to use a piece of watercolor paper for the sentiment this time around. And uh, I've got two options here. Thinking of you this Easter. I pulled that one out thinking if it was a sort of paler, it might actually, that, that would actually probably be nice for Easter. What do you guys think? Easter or the hello. Hello is definitely more neutral, but I think I could get away with the Easter also. But either is fine, of course. So I'm just going to grab my stays on. This is a red rubber stamp. So I, I like to use the stays on black where I can because it's a nice rich black. Make sure that's well inked. And go ahead and stamp that on there. It's not quite centered. So hopefully, hmm, I might have to. Do the other. I'm gonna have to do it in the other order. Yeah. Okay. So I take it back. I'm gonna. I'm gonna punch it out first. 
So this piece is a little bit too small, as you can see, but we're gonna do a little trick with the punch that I love. So um, I'm gonna just put it into the punch and then I'm gonna kind of guide it in there and just trim off one side. So I've got it mostly in there. It's probably a good fraction of it that I'm punching out. Okay. So like that. So I want a smaller size piece. So now I'm going to stamp the sentiment and I'm going to stamp it so that it's justified near the, near the top of the piece. This paper towel is a little bit feeling not too even. So now I need to grab a scrap paper here because I always like to test out my stamps, especially when they're not for the polymer, to make sure they're actually uh, straight. And sometimes it's hard to tell because the image on the front is not lined up straight with the the actual stamp. Okay, so that gives me an idea. All right, so there's my hello. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back into my punch. And one of the ways I could do it is stick it in the top, but it's really hard to get it in there and to get the edges in. So I like to just go in the side and then I'm just gonna punch off, line it up and punch off the bottom. So I'm getting it nice and snug around the sentiment. So the full size punch is this size. This is the um, hexagon punch. And it would be like that if I left it full size. So now I have a border, which I love, but I want the border to be a little bit smaller than that, right? So I can do that same trick again, put it into the punch, grab it from the inside. Now I don't want to take off too much because, uh, because I want to make sure I have enough of a border. So there's that, I'm just gonna punch that off. It's a very small amount, let's see if that was enough. Probably could have done a little bit more, but we'll just go with that, right? So you can punch off as much or as little as you want with this method of um, double punching, essentially. So you can do that with other punches as well. So I'm gonna stop for just one second to show you that because I think it's a really cool way to show the versatility of the punches. So we've got the sentiment that we're using, but you can do the same thing with the circle punch. So in this case, I've got a full circle punched out. I can slide it right in there. And I probably have to slide it in the other way. So I'm punching off that. And I can just size it however I want. So I can make it into an oval or whatever. So you know, just punch it off and you can get an interesting different shape. If you want to use that for a sentiment. That looks like it looks like an eye. <laughs> or I could use the, uh, the negative space and get them a crescent moon, right? That's kind of cool. So that I can do that with the circle. And then I can do the same thing with this punch. It's another great one to do it with. Stick it in there. Now, if I want to do it this way, I can just punch it off and get a small segment off of this edge or... I can punch it this way and get it smaller that way, right? So there's so many different ways to use your punches. And if your punch doesn't exactly fit a sentiment, you can adapt it and adjust to make it work for what you need, right? So another really fun thing is you can make it not just smaller, but you can make it larger, right? So I've got a piece of cardstock here and it's sized so that it's, uh, just a hair less narrow than the width of that punch. So I can stick it in here, pull that out. And let's see, I'm just going to punch it off of the top. Do the same thing. And this one, let's see, I'm going backwards here. My brain. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to stick it in like that, pull it out this way. And I can make it as long or as short as I want, right? 
so I can't I can make it bigger or smaller depending on what I'm working with what the image is or what the sentiment is so I think that's a really cool cool option so there's you know I've got a now rounded little square rectangle or whatever <laughs> and I can do the same thing with my circle right um, anyway, you get the idea. It's kind of cool. Now I've done that with, um, the hexagon also on another card, which I have not shared on my blog, but I did do, um, a reel, um, an Instagram reel for this project. And this was actually uh, a team project. So this is the hexagon punch and it's just elongated with the method that I just shared there. So, um, it's, uh, it's just great. Great to have new ways, different ways to use the resources that we have. Um, and uh, I love that one because sometimes, you know, you, you could use a die, but um, if you have a punch that you can adapt to the size that you want or need, uh, it's very handy. All right. So let's go ahead and put this together. Let's do my craft mat here. So you could really, if you used the ink pads direct to the stamp, um, you could kick out a whole bunch of these really fast. Um, using the sponge dauber is a little bit more time consuming. Um, and if you use the brayer, that's another, another option. Best if you have multiple brayers, that would be nice. All right. I'm going to go ahead and just attach that direct onto my Melon Mambo piece. So did you guys have good holidays and a good new year? I can't, it feels like it was, you know, like it went by really fast. <laughs> um, do you have something you want to share about your holidays? Are you sad that they're over? Are you glad that they're over? Did you get anything special for Christmas that you would want to share? Just curious. <laughs> Being nosy. Oh, I'm glad you like the, the tutorial on the punches, Mary Beth. Okay, now I'm going to have to trim this down because I have that dirty part up at the top. I'm going to do that quickly right over here off camera. I'm just going to take it off an eighth of an inch off both sides. We'll go ahead and attach that to the inside. All right. Pretty good, works, right? So now I, well also the, when I originally did this, I played around with just regular white paper, right? So that's what I have on the inside here, but I don't know if you can tell the difference, but the watercolor paper just takes the water so much better. You can actually, um, I don't know. It still looks good though. And on the inside of my original card, I actually trimmed off a piece of this white to put on the inside so I would have a decorative element on the inside. And, you know, it's subtle, but it is a little bit different. All right, so let's go ahead and put this together. That's the side that's not centered. <laughs> Oh, wow. Melissa, your last two radiation treatments. Well, that's got to feel really good to have that done. <laughs> wow. I hope you can just move, move past, move past it at this point. I'll be thinking about you. Oh, and Sharon, you just got back from taking your daughter and grandson to the airport. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Quiet, right? 
pros and cons, right? Quiet can be good sometimes, but all right. So now I've got some ribbon to, to put behind the sentiment here. And I pulled out a couple of other options just for the heck of it to try some other things. We'll see what they look like. Um, and I basically just wrapped it around my fingers. I don't know how this iridescent's going to look, but hmm. didn't fold that very well, but I think that might actually look kind of nice. And then I've got this one, which is, I think it is, I'm going to say it's lemon lime twist, but it's close enough in color. So it would probably look just fine. Let's just play around with this. Hmm. Okay, that's option two. And then I've got this gingham. It's uh, it's actually vanilla and black gingham, and it's kind of looking a little bit dirty next to that, so I'm going to not do that one. So got that one. Or this one. Or the iridescent. And on my original, I used butterflies, the brass butterflies. Um, but I grabbed another embellishment that is one of the new embellishments in the mini catalog. And I thought those might be kind of fun to play with. Also, got some gold in there. Ooh, mix the two greens. Hmm. That's a fun idea. Might just have to try that. Uh, I think also the iridescent with one of the greens might look pretty too. I was thinking one, but I like your thinking, Melissa, doing two. So these are, what are they called? Iridescent foil gems. Hmm. Okay, let's try the two greens. Decisions, decisions. Hmm. Ooh, and then there's all three. <laughs> oh my goodness get me started a whole new th thinking I could just do I think I might just have to do this because I kind of like them all let's do this put that away we're going to use this piece because it's just the right size Down on top of there. Let's see if that looks okay. So I've got my fingers all spread there. And oh, I always do this. Got to put adhesive on the back of your thing before you get the ribbon, like while you're holding onto it precariously, right? So you need it to be kind of down the middle. Let's see what we think of this. It's kind of getting a little bit crazy in there. Might be a little bit too much. Maybe just one fold. Go like that. Hmm. Okay. Anybody commenting? Sentiment needs to be in the middle of the card. Yeah, I know. I was thinking it can't really be like it sort of has to not cover up the pink ones. I was thinking the same thing, um, Jolene. Great minds think alike, right? You like the darker green, Lorley? <laughs> well, I like going with all three. Let's see what we think of that. I think it's kind of fun. Sometimes I do these things and then I go off camera and I change it up because I have to think about it. I don't know about you guys, but I usually ruminate on my on my projects, on my designs, especially when I'm playing with new stuff. I like it. Um, I like the tails on the bottom, but I don't know how much I like the 
top part. Is it too much? <laughs> uh, let's see. Yes. Okay. Scissors. Okay. This is definitely a little bit out of my usual, but we're going to do it anyway. And then maybe it'll change. Maybe I'll have to change it, but for now, this is what I'm doing. Jeez. I don't know. <laughs> fiddling and fiddling. I like the colors. I don't know if I necessarily like the, the, you know, the layout, but all right. And I would put it on dimensionals. I probably have to play with that a little bit, but I don't want to do this on up while we're live. Cause I'm, I'm going to just, I'll take too long. That's what I do, but let's grab some of these iridescent foil gems. See if those look pretty. I'm just really liking the colors. Um, and we'll grab a paper piercing tool. I think I like those as an alternative to the butterflies. I like the butterflies too, but let's just do these for fun. Ooh, they look so sparkly and pretty. I'm liking that. And we'll grab a small one. up here. I'm, I'm going to play with the sentiment a little bit and as this might, this is a little bit too much, so I'm going to mess with that, but I do like the embellishments. I think they're quite pretty. Working on getting that little sort of triangle shape there. All right, that's what I got for now. <laughs> I could do tails on both sides and eliminate the loop. Ah, like just like just the straight. Oh, there's an idea. I kind of like that too. You struggle with ribbon, Megan? Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> Cut the fold at the top. So, Johnny, you're you're suggesting that too. I think that's okay. Wait a minute. Okay, there's a three of you are saying that. All right, let's just do it. Majority rules here. Okay. I like it. And then I might have to mess with them. The position of them. Yeah, I like it better. I wasn't liking the, uh, the loop at the top. So we are in agreement on that. Yeah. Still, I'm still struggling with it. Like it needs to be like fan out from the center. Let's try that. Let's try twisting it in the middle see how that looks. And then we'll put dimensionals. Oh, that's a little bit better. I think that's a little bit better. I have to fine tune those tails. Okay. It's getting there. I think it's kind of fun. It's a little crazy, but it's fun. Okay. I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> I'm going to leave it like that for now because um, I can't commit yet. It's going to get covered up. You want to see the finished project, go to my blog and I'll, I'll put it on my blog. <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys hanging here. All right. So um, this is how I create. I have to just sit and ruminate. And when I'm struggling with something, I just have to step away from it and come back to it. But clearly that's not going to happen while we're live. So let's just go back to my reminders and stuff. And I'm going to show you um, the projects for the 
faux parchment paper technique class. So um, club members, of course, um, get the class uh, essentially for free uh, with an order. So you order six times a year um, when you're a part of club. And then at the end of club, you get uh, $40 of free product. My in-person club members um, also get host rewards. So it's just a different way of getting host rewards in person than online, but that's basically the same idea. And um, this, uh, the, the club class is my technique class the faux parchment paper technique class. So um, there's details in the links, links in the description of the video for signing up either for club or for the a la carte faux parchment paper technique class if you wanna just do the single class. So um, again, there's details um, in the description of the video and on my website. So let me show you the projects. Um, so I played around with this technique called the, with the faux parchment paper basically, and it's the, the background element that is the parchment. And, and then I've used some designer paper, some die cuts, some gold heat embossing. Anyway, I, I kind of love it. Um, and here's the second one. Got a little bit of a collage look in there. And then here is the third one. Just a little bit the most, the kind of fanciest of the bunch. I've used all but one image in the stamp set, I think. I've used all of the dies in the set as well. So, um, and everybody will make two each of the layouts. I may be doing variations um, in the designs for each, but it will be these three layouts. So that is the upcoming club class and um, faux parchment paper technique class, so yay. I hope some of you will sign up or all of you will sign up <laughs> and join me for this fun class. So the in-person class is um, on Friday, January 19th. If you're local and you're interested in attending, um, I'm putting together an email specifically for in-person participants now. So it'll go out uh, tomorrow, that email. Um, if you are interested and you're interested in the class to go online, uh, you can click on the link in the video description and there's details there. So it's a little bit different for how you sign up for in-person versus online, just you know, for the obvious reasons, the logistics are different. Um, so anyway, that's what we got today. So I am gonna be um, back next Thursday. Uh, for another Facebook Live, and then the week that I'll skip because that's a club week. So I try to, you know, um, make my schedule so it's not crazy on any given week. Um, the fan effect is great. The fan effect. The fan effect. Um, I now I, I'm not sure what you mean by the fan effect. <laughs> I have a fan over there actually. Um, but anyway, this the, this little scroll here that's my favorite. I know it's really small, but there's a little scroll on there. Maybe that's what you mean, the fan. Um, anyway, um, so what else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, so I'll be back next Thursday. That's January 11th um, for another Facebook Live. And the tutorial, PDF tutorial for today's project um, will be in the newsletter um, next Wednesday. I... Uh, I published my newsletter a day early this week. It went out on Tuesday because I had taken two weeks off and um, there was stuff going on on Tuesday. So I just felt like it needed to get out early. But usually my newsletter comes out on Wednesdays and the free PDF tutorials are in that the newsletter. So, all right, everybody. Oh, the ribbon fan by twisting. There you go. <laughs> that makes sense. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for clarifying. And I'm glad you like the colors. They're fun colors. And uh, again, uh, go onto my website, um, melissascraftingtreehouse.com. And if you look at my latest post, that post has um, this project um, and uh, it's a blog. So you can hop from um, it among 11 of us. I think there's 11 of us right now for this particular hop. Uh, and lots of different projects from demonstrators throughout the world, actually. So it's a really talented group of people. And I encourage you to go check out that blog up and, and, uh, and give it some love. <laughs> Leave comments, say hello. 
So uh, anyway, I will let you guys go. I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And until next Thursday, have a great week. And again, Happy New Year. And thanks so much for joining me tonight. Uh, it's great to have you here. All right. Have a wonderful evening and happy crafting. Mwah.